if you don't unpack and do laundry in between trips, AKA your next roll, then you are probably just bringing those same heavy bags with you to your next roll into that next culture. Those bags are heavy. You are exhausted. It has been a long trip. It's heavy with regret, heavy with emotions, heavy with hypervigilance, wondering if this next place will be like the last, heavy just with a lot of things. Welcome to You Belong in the C-Suite podcast. You are ambitious in life and in your career, but something is missing. You want to bring more of your passion to what you do, because let's be honest, you pour a ton into your work and it needs to mean more. I'm your host, Laura Eigel. I'm a mom, wife, PhD, coach, advocate, introvert, and indoor rowing fanatic. I'm passionate about living a life that's in line with my values. We'll give you the actionable tips and tools you need to lead with your values, make a difference, and have career success. The world needs more diversity and authenticity in the top jobs at organizations. Your leadership belongs there. You belong in the C-suite. Recently, a senior leader in an organization told me that she loves how I help people find their way. And I think that's a really great way to put it. Career transition can be a lonely place and it's all about finding your way and finding their way is a common theme that my clients have. They may not ask this specific question, but when you boil it down, they are asking this, should I stay or should I go? Sometimes this question is about a specific role. Sometimes they're asking about the whole company. Am I ready to move on to my next thing or when should I move on to the next thing? I've identified five categories within this question. Should I stay or should I go? Whatever the answer is to that question, you need a plan. So I've built out five different action plans according to the paths that my clients have taken to answer these questions. Are you aligned? Are you heading for burnout? Are you already ready for your next job? But maybe you just need a confidence boost. Have you already made the decision to leave, but you just haven't pulled the trigger yet? Or should you stay in place and continue to grow? Find out which category fits you and get the free action plan to take your intentional step in your career. Take the should I stay or should I go quiz now and download your customized action plan at thecatchgroup.com slash quiz. That's thecatchgroup.com slash quiz. Welcome to this week's episode of the You Belong in the C-Suite podcast. This week, we are continuing our career transition series. In the first episode of our series, I went through the five categories of leaders that asked the question, should I stay or should I go? And we introduced our new should I stay or should I go quiz and action plans that are full of actionable steps and self-reflection. Have you taken the quiz yet? You should. Go to thecatchgroup.com slash quiz to take it and download your free action plan. In the second episode of our series, I talked about how to evaluate job opportunities with your values first as you intentionally build your career. The high-level overview of that episode focused on the three-part framework. First, introducing this idea of grounding yourself in your values, identifying your non-negotiables, really sitting in your accomplishments and thinking through your aspirations. The second part of the framework is all about identifying the opportunities and getting deeper information on the company culture and values that are important to you. And the third step of that framework was really evaluating by using a scorecard of a values assessment, your non-negotiables and critical experiences. So that process can help you center yourself and your values to see what opportunities are a fit for you versus what you are a fit for. So in this episode, the third of four in this career transition series, I'm going to talk about another theme that has come up for my clients. Once they find a new opportunity, they are transitioning to that new opportunity and they want to set themselves up for success. But often they are leaving cultures that they were misaligned in. 
Maybe they worked for managers that were not the best. They did not feel supported. Maybe they weren't even able to do their actual jobs because of all the chaos and toxicity. And some have even faced traumatic, toxic cultures or experiences like racism or sexual harassment or workplace bullying, just lots of things. So often when I'm working with leaders who are also looking for their new opportunity, they're also seeking support from a therapist for some of that trauma, which I am a huge fan of. I personally have a coach and a therapist. Those are two different people, but there's a lot that happens and lots to get through. So seeking that support's important. And so all that stuff that happens in the transition between leaving your last opportunity and starting your next that's what we're going to talk about today. So if you aren't processing some of those thoughts and mindsets and feelings about that transition, especially leaving a toxic culture before you go into your next role, you may bring some of that stuff with you. Let's use the analogy of luggage, right? You just went on a trip. You have been carrying a lot with you, dealing with so much in that not so great culture that you're leaving. And if you're still carrying those bags with you, if you don't put them down, if you don't unpack and do laundry in between trips, aka your next roll, then you are probably just bringing those same heavy bags with you to your next roll into that next culture. Those bags are heavy. You are exhausted. It has been a long trip. It's heavy with regret, heavy with emotions, heavy with hypervigilance, wondering if this next place will be like the last, heavy just with a lot of things. So in this transition period, I want you to put those bags down, empty them, do that laundry before you pack for your next trip. Understand what you want to bring with you on your next trip and what you want to stay home or even just get rid of. I want you to ask the questions, what am I leaving behind and what am I taking with me to my next role? So I have a few pieces of advice for you based on my personal experience and experiences from my clients. And these are themes from multiple people. And when I transition roles personally, I also have an exercise that I want to share with you that has helped my clients navigate the transition from leaving their roles and starting their new roles and navigating that space in between. So let's get started. So this exercise is one that utilizes a tool that's in my values first framework. So as a recap, the values first framework is the framework that I use to coach my clients and that I've used for myself in building my own career. It's an acronym that spells out the word values. V stands for values first, where you identify what matters most to you. A is for audit time, understanding on how you spend your time and how that aligns with your values. L is for life boundaries. What boundaries do you need to put in place to care for those values? U is for uplifting others. How are you connecting with peers to hold you accountable to your values? And then also modeling your values for your team with your leadership. And E is for experiencing conflict because it's, it's when, not if, you will face that conflict, either internal or external conflict in your values. And then the S is for sustaining values, which is building a plan to live your values for the long haul. So this exercise is from the E section of the values first framework, experiencing conflict. And even though you're transitioning to your next role, there is still a lot of conflict to process through within that transition. You may feel conflict and guilt from leaving your team behind. You may experience conflict leaving your role because there's tension and you're just trying to survive the countdown into your last day so you can get the heck out of there. You may be experiencing conflict because you worry that you're going to be walking into the same kind of culture in your new gig. You just don't know, right? You may be experiencing conflict because you're doubting yourself. This one is really common. This is where we tend to trust ourselves less because we were the ones that put ourselves in the position in the first place in that not so great role. We made that decision and it didn't turn out well. So do I trust myself now in this next place? Do I trust my own decisions? That self-trust is a big one that has some conflict around it. There's lots of conflicts that we face in this transition. Within the experiencing conflict in the values first framework, there's an exercise called the high-low worksheet. 
The high-low exercise can be used to debrief an individual conflict or a group conflict. It's a really great way to learn from situations for continual growth because we are never done learning. And it's essentially an after action review or what a project manager might call a postmortem. You know, the meeting that you have after a project ends to see what you learn from it. How often do you even have those after action reviews? Probably not enough. And so I want you to do this high low exercise and I want you to do it as a reflection exercise on the role and culture you are leaving. So an after action review of that role or that company. So the high low exercise has a series of open ended questions to ask yourself to reflect on. So what's different about the exercise for your career transition in this situation is that I want you to use it multiple ways and in a different frame of reference. So let me tell you what I mean by that. I want you to reflect on multiple aspects of your experience at your previous role to really understand and answer the question, what am I leaving behind and what am I taking with me to my next role? So here are some perspectives that I'd like you to consider. What were your highs and lows as a direct report? What were your highs and lows as a peer? What were your highs and lows as the leader of your team? What were your highs and lows as being a part of a leadership team? What were your highs and lows with your best boss or your worst boss? What were your highs and lows of your biggest project? So those are some of the ones that are most common to consider. You probably have a couple of other lenses or other things that you'd want to do a high, low debrief on. So what other aspects of your employee experience might you want to consider reflecting on? But very tactically, this means utilizing a high, low worksheet for each of these different lenses. So what is in the high, low worksheet? Well, good news is that you can download it for free if you grab the book because it is in the Values First workbook. That is a free download, which accompanies my book, Values First. So go to thecatchgroup.com slash Values First and get a copy of the book and download the Values First workbook and the high-low exercises in there. I'm going to walk you through it here too, though. Have you ever taken one of those quizzes that tells you which character you are from your favorite TV show? I know I've been guilty of that. It's sometimes a fun thing to do and a way to kill time at the end of a long day. You know the days I'm talking about, the days that are filled because we are so busy reacting to something during the day for work, but you need some time at night for yourself. So you find yourself scrolling and maybe taking a quiz or deep diving into your high school acquaintances vacation pics to Italy, wishing you could have taken that trip. If work hadn't been so crazy, you would. Since you're up anyway, I have a quiz for you. It's the question you've been thinking about, maybe glaringly, or maybe it's the one that's been in the back of your mind. Should I stay or should I go from this job, from this company? Are you misaligned? Are you heading for burnout? Are you already ready for your next job, but maybe just need a confidence boost? Have you already made the decision to leave, but you just haven't pulled the trigger yet? Or should you stay in place and continue to grow? Find out which category fits you and get the free action plan to take an intentional step in your career. Take the should I stay or should I go quiz now to download your customized action plan at thecatchgroup.com slash quiz. That's the catchgroup.com slash quiz. So let's start with this frame of reference, the highs and lows of being the leader of your team. So the first thing on the worksheet is to describe the situation. Then what were the highs and lows of that experience? When were you living your values? Then what were the lows of the situation? When did you feel at your worst and what was happening? And then what is your biggest takeaway to live your values more consistently? So after you answer all of those questions in self-reflection, you have the highs and lows of your experience leading your team. It will give you insight on what you bring with you into your next leadership role. And more importantly, what you're going to be leaving behind. You'll then do your high-low worksheet for the other perspectives. 
So you as a direct report, you as a peer, you having a good boss or a bad boss, being on a leadership team, et cetera. You'll come away with multiple learnings and likely a few key themes. Then I want you to next focus and ask yourself holistically, what am I leaving behind? Are you leaving behind some hypervigilance? Are you leaving behind some self-doubt? Are you leaving behind guilt? Label those bags that you are leaving behind. List them out. Then what are you bringing with you? Maybe your confidence? your competence as a leader, your authentic leadership style, boundaries. I'd love for you to bring some boundaries with you. Building new boundaries before going into a new role is the perfect time because you can set the precedent of what is acceptable to you. You're setting expectations. For instance, like not answering emails after a certain time or not logging in on the weekends, et cetera. So this is an exercise to do, to shift this momentum from the past to the future. I find that often when we're leaving these really toxic environments, it brings up so many bad emotions. And there's a thing called negativity bias, where we tend to remember things that are bad that happen because the emotions are so real and so raw and You can just, I can just remember and put, it puts you back in that place and it kind of anchors you in this heaviness. And so I want you to really do this because this is an important way for you to shift the momentum from the past on those negative experiences into going to the future. So if we are holding onto those bags, they're just taking up your energy. They're taking up your mind space. They're sucking the energy out of us and grounding us in the past. And I want you to use this exercise to continue your forward momentum. You left that toxic work environment. You made a decision for yourself. You trusted yourself. You did that. So keep moving forward. Move forward into your new role with only the things that you want to be, bring with you to be successful. Create that space for new experiences in that new culture. Keep that momentum moving forward and living in your values. So when should you even do this exercise? I think you should do it after you leave your role. Ideally, I want you to take some time off in between. I know a lot of people say that they're going to take some time off, but do they really do it? Take at least a few weeks off in between roles if you can. I know financially that not everybody can, and there's a lot of privilege in me suggesting it, but if you can do it, you need more time than you think before you get into your next role. I will tell you, I have never heard anyone say, wow, I really wish I had taken less time before I started my new role. There is way too much time in between the transition. Usually it's the opposite. They wish they've given themselves more of a break in between ending one and starting the next. You will not get that time back. So take that time if you can. I can tell you from my own experience going from one job to another, I took a week and it was not enough. Why did I only take a week? Because I didn't want to let down my new employer. I didn't want them to think that I wasn't excited to get started. Then after I left my C-suite job, I took time off before I started my business or I said that I was going to, but guess what? I really didn't take much time off the week after I left. I went to a book writing workshop to write my book and it was amazing, but I was technically still working. My mind was still going in a different way, but I really didn't take much time off in reality. Why? Well, because I wanted to show people that I was going to do what I said I was going to do, launch my own business. My value of achievement was, was ramped up. So I jumped right into it. I started building stuff for this podcast. I got branding pictures done. I had somebody working on my webpage. What I should have done in retrospect were all of those things. But just a few weeks later, after I took a freaking break. So take that time. You need it more than you think you do. So ideally, you'll be taking your break, resting, relaxing, reading, decompressing, doing nothing. Maybe you take an actual vacation where you don't have to check any emails. You are not working on your old role and you are not working on your next role. You might be asking, working on your next role before you even start? Is that even a thing? Do people do that? 
Actually, yes, you'd be surprised. Lots of people do this. They're reading and getting ready for their next role before they start because they want to come in ready to go. Don't do that if you don't have to, please. Rest, relax, read, decompress, go to the spa, go to therapy, do whatever you need to do. Then towards the end of that in-between time, I want you to do this high-low exercise and start thinking through what you will be leaving behind and start processing that. What bags are you letting go of? Because if you take them with you, you will carry that heaviness. You'll probably find it there. Confirmation bias is a real thing too. If you look for something in the new place, you'll probably find it, even if it's really not there or not, because you'll be bringing that old lens with you. So instead, process in that in-between space and leave it behind. Then focus on what you're bringing with you. And you can continue that momentum to live your values as you go into that next role. Continue that momentum with more energy. You're lighter with your new bags packed, ready for your next thing. As I was walking through this high-low strategy within my group coaching program, one of the participants suggested that the learnings from the high-low activity would also be helpful to come up with different interview questions. So for instance, Sometimes we leave a role or organization without having something else lined up. Maybe you've been laid off. Maybe you're taking a sabbatical or maybe you aren't sure what you want next, but you needed to leave that environment. So you might have time to do this exercise, but you don't have an opportunity to go yet. This exercise is still helpful, very helpful to keep your momentum moving so you don't get stuck in carrying your bags and those in between spaces again. My clients mentioned that she learned a lot in doing this high-low exercise and it gave her more things to ask about in the interview process. It gives her more points to vet these new opportunities. And we talked a little bit about that in last week's episode, this idea of getting really specific questions, values aligned questions to really understand the culture of these new opportunities. And it gives us more points for evaluation. So that's the space that you're in. Use it that way. So to recap, I want you to be strategic in your transition between one job and the next one. I want you to take time to rest and recharge, then do some self-reflection with the high-low exercises and the different lenses to understand your learnings from the last role. Figure out what you are leaving behind so you can leave it. Then continue your momentum to what you're bringing with you. Continue that momentum into your new role. You own your career and you can own your transition too. I'm looking forward for you to hear our fourth episode of our career transition series next week. Until then, no matter where you are in your career and your career transition, remember your leadership belongs here. You belong in the C-suite. I want to thank you so much for listening to the You Belong in the C-Suite podcast. If you are enjoying this content, please remember to rate and review on Apple Podcasts. By leaving a review, you are helping others find this content. We will be featuring five-star reviews on air in upcoming episodes. Editing and support for the podcast is done by S&E Podcast Management. To get more tips and tools to help you live a life guided by your values, go to thecatchgroup.com. Keep your boundaries and take care.